Today we're going to talk about topical rapamycin, also known as sirolimus, and reducing signs of photoaging. So we're going to jump right into this. But this is more of a, I just put together a little kind of a slideshow, so to speak, so you'll have a little bit more visual cues and I'll be talking over them and going through them, okay? So again, sirolimus for topical um, application to reduce signs of photoaging. Uh, what is sirolimus, uh, also known as rapamycin? Well, it's an FDA approved drug, uh, reduces overactive mTOR. I spoke about that in a, another video. mTOR is a crucial part of the cell cycle. Um, it kind of dictates how cell growth and cell division is going to happen. Um, it is involved in a lot of pathways throughout the body. Um, and it helps prevent, this is kind of a big thing, it helps prevent cell senescence. So we have to define senescence a little bit though, because uh, a lot of people might be unfamiliar with that term. So senescence and aging, as you can see here. Um, <coughs> cell senescence, uh, I'm sure you can read this, but it's a cell that no longer pro, uh, prolifer pro, bleh, proliferates. Um, so it ceases to divide, changing its morphology and function. On that picture there, you can see uh, the morphogenesis uh, enlarge and flatten. Uh, a lot of times cells that are um, have a dysfunctional mTOR signaling uh, that leads to that senescence will become hyperactive. An example I used in a previous video, uh, I use here too, I think it's a great example. People that have osteoporosis, again this isn't stating this is the reason they have osteoporosis, but it is definitely something that exacerbates the issue and also kind of correlates to why aging can lead to it. So cell senescence, creating uh, a different morphology, a different cell function, can create a cell that's uh, hyperactive. So in bones, you have osteoblasts and osteoclasts. It's how your bones are recycled. Osteoblast, uh, B for building, osteoclasts, you can just think, well, osteoblast B for building might be easiest to think of it that way. But the osteoclast is the one that recycles the bone. Now, if you have senescent osteoclasts, they're going to be hyperfunctional. Um, therefore, it's going to eat away more bone than you're building, which can uh, obviously be a detriment and be uh, one of the leading reasons why your osteoporosis could be getting worse or you could be slowly uh, digressing or progressing in osteoporosis. Um, so in that picture... I think it, you know, you don't need to know all that terminology, but just the, the main takeaway from this slide is that uh, senescent cells create a, a morphology of a unique, unique shaped cell, and it also can become uh, hyper functioning in a bad way or functioning not in the way it's, it should. Um, another thing to note uh, with age, senescent cells accumulate in the skin and spread the aging phenotype to neighboring cells. Um, that's very interesting. This can result in decreased thickness, regenerative capacity, and uh, the barrier effect on the skin can also be limited. Uh, there are some studies that suggest that senescent cells within the skin can even affect neighboring systems, including organs. Uh, that's a big uh, takeaway here. Senescent cells start to lose what cell it should be. Like you don't want your skin cell um, thinking it, it's a, a, an endothelial cell. You don't want uh, cells in the bone thinking they're supposed to be muscle cells. And any sort of that, when you start losing that differentiation between cells, um, that's when systems in the body can start degrading and start working less, less well as well. So aging skin, kind of a neat picture. Um, I didn't make that. We have the where, where it was gotten from right there, though. But aging skin, it's gradual, gradual deterioration of, uh, well, the skin is an organ, so of organ function. Usually signs are rough, dry, itchy, thinner, uh, longer to heal. A big one is the loss of elasticity, and that's via loss of uh, elastin and collagen. Um, it's in bold there, but again, cell senescence can lead to a loss of function, which leads to a loss of elastin and collagen. We will have visuals coming up to show you that. And as stated before, um, the senescence can accelerate dysfunction in other systems of the body. So if your skin is full of senescent cells, cells that aren't um, dividing properly, that aren't dying off properly, that can, because they don't differentiate well either, that can seep into other systems. Something to note. Uh, so as far as clinical evidence, I just have a few snippets from a few different studies kind of giving 
uh, validity to the claim, or not, I shouldn't say claim, but to the idea that maybe topical rapamycin or sirolimus, topical mTOR inhibitors can be beneficial for photo aging. So uh, visual cues as well as, um, you know, on a molecular level too. So this study was uh, 17 participants. They used a half gram application of a 1% sirolimus or placebo uh, cream for six to eight months. Um, they did quantify as much as they could the visual appearance, and there was some other Let's markers. Let's go! Uh, <laughs> yeah, you got this! <laughs> uh, the conclusion they found was statistically significant increase in collagen type uh, 7. Uh, clinically improved reduction in fine wrinkles, increased dermal volume, brighter, more even skin tone, and decrease in prominence of veins and tendons. So... We're going to kind of dive into the, some of the pictures. These pictures are from the study itself. On the top left, there are what they were looking for was P16 positive cells. Um, <clears throat> that's a biomarker indicative of cellular senescence. Obviously, a reduction in that biomarker implies senescent cell reduction. And from a couple slides back, we know that that's very important to reduce senescent uh, cells. So as you can see, placebo, they kind of point out that brownish hue area are the P16 positive cells, and there's a greatly reduced reduction uh, visibly in the skin tissue uh, on the rapamycin-treated group. Top right, a little easier to see. Um, these are collagen fibers, um, and as you can see, the placebo has disorganized collagen fibers. You can see some bigger, thicker strands, and they're not as organized in tightly layered as the rapamycin group was. Uh, and then the, the bottom one, and this is straight from the study. I'll just read off what the, the, the bottom one says. The study was done. They applied it to their, their hand, the top of the hand, okay? But the study states, referring to um, the bottom picture there, human skin biopsies from the dorsal hands of subjects following application of topical cream containing rapamycin or placebo were stained with antibodies recognizing cytokeratin 5-6 brown staining, a marker for basal cells in the epidermis. Note that staining in rapamycin-treated skin is more focally located in the basal layer of the skin while receiving um, placebo shows cytokeratin 5-6 staining in the stratum cornulosum indicative of incomplete differentiation typical of aged skin. Uh, key word there, incomplete uh, differentiation. It's really, I like this bottom picture, and I kind of want to focus on it a little bit more because I think I didn't maybe send home how senescent cells and the lack of differentiation can really lead to overall body systemic issues. But this is a great visual of how dysfunctional senescent cells can start invading areas they shouldn't within the body. Now, again, placebo, you see... Um, that kind of brownish area creeping up into different layers of the skin where the rapamycin one, very clean differentiation in the basal layer of the skin. Uh, and that's a great visual for what senescent cells can do. And um, senescent cells can happen anywhere. It's, it's kind of part of the aging process, unfortunately, if mTOR starts getting dysfunctional, which is kind of age-related. Apologize. I need a little coffee. MD Custom RX. Let's go. So next slide, um, still from the same study, we're going on to how we talked about skin and age-related skin uh, loses elastin and collagen, so it gets thinner and it loses its, uh, uh, becomes kind of more elastic actually. That's due to the loss of the collagen. Right here, statistically significant. If you see something like a p-value for those who don't have uh, a medical background or are new to medical literature, p-values are just kind of a quantitative way to show if something is statistically significant or not. So with studies, you have some things called confounders, limitations as well, and biases. This is all in there. You could think of it as a noise, so to speak. So um, as you do a study, results are going to have a range. Placebo is going to have a range. There's always usually some level of overlap, which you can consider noise, but a p-value at least shows if it's under 0 0.05, that is statistically significant, meaning, we, yes, we have found a correlation between the treatment and um, the effect, okay? So in this case, they did find statistically significant uh, difference in collagen type 7 
uh, in the placebo group versus the rapamycin group. And what's really unique too is you can clearly see that visual, the collagen staining is that kind of that brown line, uh, looks really good as opposed to uh, very discreet uh, brown line on the placebo too. And this is only after six to eight months, so that's, that's really neat as well. Still from that study, we have some pictures to try to give you a visual representation. Um, it's nice because you see placebo, rap, uh, and then the rapamycin group on, on both sides. Some is, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be subjective and our results are subject to vary a little bit. And this was just on the hand. Like the, the top one is a little harder, in my opinion, to see the difference in the skin. Uh, the bottom one is a little easier to see the reduction, like of the redness, reduction of uh, the veins. Um, but like I said uh, in the previous slides, I mean, we, we dove into uh, more of the histology, more of the molecular side of things, uh, the measurable biomarkers and whatnot. So you know that it, what's going on in the background too this is what's leading to this visual representation. I do have on here as well, obviously it says, uh, no blood samples collected in this study contain detectable levels of rapamycin as assessed um, by a, a particular analysis metric that they used. Uh, that will be a theme throughout the other studies we talk about too. There were no detectable level, levels of rapamycin, serolimus, uh, systemically in the body. Even though, that, I mean, that's a whole other subject. A lot of people actually use rapamycin and serolimus for longevity's sake. But that is not the topic of the discussion on this one. So we have more visual clinical evidence uh, on this slide here. So that left picture, obviously they blacked out the eyes, keeping the people anonymous. Um, <clears throat> this was neat. This was provided. Uh, it's a visual provided by uh, the work they're doing in Arkansas's Children's Hospital. They stated in the article, most patients have improvements in the first four to eight weeks of daily administration. Um, Though recurrence of lesions is seen commonly in non-compliant patients, um, and what they're dealing with is angiofibromas, um, which is actually usually much, much less prominent in post-pubertal subjects. So Children's Hospital, um, right around the age of puberty there, they're having a little bit more issue. But you can see the, the left pictures are prior to treatment, the right side pictures are after treatment, um, quite the clearing up of that, which is which is pretty neat. Uh, those topical agents were not absorbed. Uh, their blood was free of systemic side effects. Um, <clears throat> there was some skin burning uh, and irritation and dryness. And the article was saying that's likely due to preservatives or additives and can be avoided with uh, a skin protective agent. So um, if you're getting this compound as a topical cream, you know, make sure it's an ele elegant compound and then also, uh, you know, um, consult the patient on using proper UV skin protection um, if they're going outside. The right picture deals with patients with rosacea. Um, it's a common inflammatory, chronic common inflammatory skin disorder. Uh, the pathogenesis is still not completely clear as to why people get it. Um, but here we have several lines of evidence that were provided to demonstrate that the mTOR uh, signaling is hyperactivated in the skin, especially in the epidermis. I mean, that's what the study is kind of saying. But both uh, in the study, you can see the visuals. They did it both on patients and mouse models um, for the rosacea. Let's see here. Both the mTOR C1 deletion in epithelium and inhibition by its specific inhibitors uh, can block the development of rosacea-like skin inflammation. And both the p-values in this study as well were under 0.05, showing statistical significance. So what you're seeing is statistically significant topical rapamycin application on this, these patients here, the before and after. They did it, um, they say mTOR C1 signaling, they were being a little bit more heavy with verbiage, but that's essentially what the rapamycin serolimus is trying to do. It's inhibiting some of that signaling to help with the skin. So what do we have for typical topical dosing? Um, doses at 0.003% to 0.015% were used for the children and young adults seen on the previous slide. Um, doses at 1% were used in the prior study with an older population. Um, that was slide eight, uh, the one we talked about the most actually, uh, the one that had the other pictures um, involving collagen and whatnot too. 
And what's notable again is no systemic absorption of Sirolimus was evident. So that's, that's very nice, of course. Takeaway here, Sirolimus, also known as rapamycin, is safe and it's clearly effective uh, as a way to reduce markers of aging and age-related diseases and photoaging. Uh, Sirolimus is used already for different dermatologic pathologies effectively, uh, but we do know because it doesn't get in the system, uh, if you're not looking to have it in the system, it, it's, it's safe. It's safe to be used um, against signs of photoaging as well. And lastly, I want to say, I don't have it on the slide there though, but cell senescence, which is one of the things that rapamycin or sirolimus is going to inhibit or help prevent to some degree, is huge. Cell senescence leads to a loss of differentiation of the cell, which means cells are going to be hyper-functioning and not knowing if they're a skin cell or a muscle cell, a bone cell, a heart cell, and they can affect their neighboring cells. Cells communicate with each other, their neighbors, to know what cell they're supposed to be. If you start gunking that up, um, you're going to lead to a loss of function with multiple systems and uh, accelerate aging. Uh, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. References are here. Uh, we always try to reply to the comments as much as we can. Um, we do compound topical rapamycin. We do have providers that would be more than willing to write for this um, to help uh, photo aging or age-related skin conditions with topical rapamycin serolimus. All right, thank you for your time. Take care. Some other Let's markers. go! Uh <laughs> yeah, you got this! Ha <laughs> ha.